joining today. Uh, I uh, really look forward to have this uh, dialogue with the two of you on the topic of edible insects and the two cookbooks that you have been instrumental in preparing as part of Agriculture for Food Security 2030, AgriForce 2030 program. My name is Annelie Sundin. I work uh, with communication and engagement in, uh, in the program. Uh, these uh, cookbooks are now available on our website, uh, eslu.se slash agrifose, and you can find them via the links below this video. Uh, as more and more uh, people are becoming aware of today, insects can be uh, very nutritious and can be a good replacement of animal protein, uh, such as beef and pork. This has major benefits for our climate if we are to reduce our meat intake. It can also have potential to combat food insecurity, for example, when crops fail in a year with a lot of drought. Uh, edible insects can become essential for alleviating hunger. Uh, edible insects are common in many parts of Africa. Uh, however, today in many urban areas, they are losing in popularity. While in other parts of the world, uh, for example, here where I am based in Europe, we can see that some edible insects are trending and laws and regulations are quickly trying to adapt to allow for the trading and processing and preparation of insects as food. Uh, however, back to Africa, uh, you both set out on the quest of making the edible insect sector flourish uh, in both Zimbabwe and Democratic Republic of uh, Congo, as well as beyond these two countries. Uh, and as part of that quest, uh, you have been together with uh, brilliant chefs and researchers uh, developing two cookbooks on edible insects. So before I start with my first question for you, I, could you please quickly introduce yourself? If we start with Lindley. My name is uh, Lindley Chimona Carlton, and I am an associate professor in rural development at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. I am particularly interested in issues of food security and poverty alleviation, and not least when it comes to gender equality within these areas. Thank you, Lindley. Excellent. And then uh, Robert in Zimbabwe. Okay. My name is Robert Musundire. I'm an associate professor of entomology at Chinoy University of Technology. I'm interested in working on the utilization of edible insects as food and feed. I've been working in the agri for sale program since 2016, uh, mainly to promote uh, handling, uh, safety, and marketing in Zimbabwe and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, okay, my, uh, uh, my first question is a little bit around the why. So why is it that you uh, came to this point to write these two cookbooks? Uh, and of course, you can tell us a little bit more about them. But what do you think that these cookbooks can contribute with, uh, especially in terms of food insecurity? And I would like to start with Lin Lee, if if you think. If you can. So when, you know, the issue of food security and Agenda 2030 began to gain momentum, much of the discussions around animal source foods in relation to nutrition, in relation to climate change, but also in relation to stewardship started to take form. I found that there was one voice that was really missing, and that was the voice of women. And in this collaborative project together with um, Robert, you know, what I found missing as a link was working with scientists from African institutions within the area of entomology or entomophagy, and really trying to work together from SLU's viewpoint of looking at issues around global development, but also sustainability, thinking how could we 
look into these issues together at the same time as bring these forgotten voices of women to the forefront. And so with Robert, the interest was, Robert, can you assist and work more on these issues of understanding insects and in Zimbabwe, but also can we gather and benefit from the knowledge that you have from a scientific evidence-based viewpoint mm. with respect to insects mm -hmm. to working in the Democratic Republic of Congo where we are working with women that would like to develop enterprises around insects but maybe don't really have this understanding of the science involved in terms of processing, but also right. preparation and thereby consumption and making sure mm. that they're markets. Mm. So I went on to engage more with the women in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And they were these fantastic women from AFAC. And these were a group of 30 women to begin with. And many of them were actually not, they were literate, but maybe not as, you know, not at, the, at that level of how can we now look into this from a scientific basis. But they had so much knowledge yeah. in terms of what the insects were and how these particular insects featured in, in various you know, recipes and dishes. Mm. At the same time, because we were in Kinshasa, they were very cognizant of the fact that the limitation in terms of consumption of insects was the price factor. They were getting increasingly expensive and rare. Mm. And so how could we then not lose this wonderful knowledge basis that they had both in terms of experiential um, lessons on which ones are edible, which insects are edible, how do you collect them, how do you prepare them, how do you preserve them, and when are they best consumed, and how do you balance consumption in relation to availability and price factors. So for me, meeting Marianne and her colleagues and together with Beatrice, my colleague from Sweden, going through this participatory exploratory phases of, so which insects exist here? Can we do a market survey? And I'm telling you, these women went out and collected and brought back with them for a discussion, so many different types of insects <laughs> that they could then tell the story of how it reminded them either of where they came from in the Democratic Republic of Congo, when they consumed them in terms of their childhood, but also as adults or as mothers, and how they were dreaming of doing more than just preparing for themselves, but preparing for a bigger audience yeah. to preserve the culture and the knowledge which they had. So this for me was the driving force. How do I get the knowledge of African women, their experiences, their expertise documented? Because hitherto, many of the cookbooks around insects, as you have said in the beginning, the interest from the Europeans and mm. the, you know, the other um, rich countries uh, is interesting, yes. But how about documenting and sharing the expertise that has existed that these women have? So for a long time, yeah. Okay. I'll let uh, I'll let Robert in here. Um, please, uh, what's your comments uh, and uh, you know what led you to to create these uh, cookbooks, Robert? Yeah. Well, in the beginning, we made observations in the traditional consumption practices of edible insects, mainly in Zimbabwe. We've been doing this work for quite some time, since 2004. And um, he, when, we, when I met Linley in 2016, that was the turning point now, because she has been uh, interacting with women from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, from our point, we had observed that insects were just being cooked in the traditional manner with minimal value addition and processing. 
And in some instances, uh, insects such as termites, if you cook them the way they are, there were issues to do with digestion. Uh, some of them are not properly uh, taken through the system. So Lindley brought these exciting ideas about uh, processing and, and adding value. That's when we started to uh, have some thinking around uh, what products uh, we could make. So uh, through that interaction, we then uh, realized that if we come up with uh, innovation in the products, it could even encourage new consumers to come in and then uh, we could increase the number of people that are consuming insects mm. as food. Oh, that, thank you, Robert. That, uh, this, both of your stories here gave really a full picture of mm. why you landed with these uh, cookbooks. But can you tell me a little bit uh, about, about the actual process of writing these recipes together um, and how were different chefs involved how were the researchers involved in in the actual recipes and the photos that you've taken etc maybe robert you could start here any comments on that all right uh, based on the documentation of the traditional practices i had a uh, a manuscript regarding the traditional uh, preparation and consumption practices, and uh, based on some work that has been done, had been done in Congo uh, by mm -hmm. Linley, I approached a group of uh, chefs at Chino University of Technology in the Department of Hospitality and Tourism. Then um, I flighted this idea that we need innovative products uh, based on these practices. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started. I, I allow, we, together with Linley again, we allowed them to uh, innovate around those products. Mm -hmm. And the result was so fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Uh, I, I, I can't wait to actually uh, try and cook some here at home. I just need to get hold of the insects. Linley, do you have any, uh, any comments? Yeah, so, uh, you know, they, the process in Zimbabwe was much more academic, uh, more exact science, I would say. And you will see the difference when you look at the two books. You, you pick up the cookbook from Zimbabwe. It is very precise with measurements, portion sizes, and you know grams and, 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 and those things. Whereas the process with the women, as I told you, these were a group of women coming from many different walks of... Um, socioeconomic class. Mm. And so the whole thing was very organic. So firstly, it was, how do you explain the idea of documenting their wealth of information into a cookbook? Yeah. So um, I was traveling from Dar es Salaam to, um, um, to Kinshasa. And at the airport in Dar es Salaam, I happened to come across a cookbook which was written by an African chef. And he was trying to show the world the importance of African cuisine. And what I liked is how there was lots of pictures, storytelling, and then making these typical African dishes into this cookbook. Mm. So I bought that cookbook and brought it with me um, to the group of women together with my colleague, uh, Beatrice Kidembe. And then I said to the women, can you look at this cookbook? And if it's, it's, the dishes were actually from my birth country, Malawi. I said, do you think we could do something um, similar with insects, but from the DRC Congo? And I will leave this book with you and you look at this book and see if you could do something similar, but, but with insects. So the book, not even at the end of the day, had passed around several hands and they're like, yeah, of course we can do this. Yeah. yeah, I already know what I can do with my, you know, I can contribute with these dishes. And they said, excellent. So we left them to work on the dishes that they would like to prepare. And then using that cookbook as an inspiration, mm. we the scientists came back to Sweden and um, 
I've forgotten how many months it took. And I think I shared with you, uh, Robert, if you remember, I said, Robert, look at what the women have come up with. They sent me a document which, you know, they had uh, their recipes. And then, you know, I said, this is excellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the process, they said, you know, we could actually open a restaurant in Kinshasa together as women. And I said, really? Yes, we're going to ask the mayor of Kinshasa if he can give us, you know, uh, some space in the city where we can have an insect restaurant, you know, and that uh, restaurant is going to be called Le Delicious de, de Miquese, you know, insect like delicacies. Yeah, like, like the book. So that's actually the name of the restaurant in Kinshasa. And then they, they took it one step further and they said, but we also need endorsement because if we just do it and it's just us women and nobody knows yeah. about us, they may people may not really be convinced. So we're going to look for the top chef in Kinshasa and ask him to you know put some recipes, uh, insect recipes in the cookbook. And so that's um, the gentleman that you see in the cookbook who is one of the top chefs in Kinshasa that made those insect recipes. So the mm. thing just organically grew and, and the mm. women you know, took it up themselves and, and made it what it is. And Robert was always in the background because I was like, Robert, I just need to check, are these insects edible insects or could they be causing some allergies? And, and there, Robert was really good. They even sent you some samples, didn't we, Robert? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Huh. Excellent. What a story. I really like this story. And it feels uh, at some point, maybe you should send one of the cookbooks to this uh, uh, chef that wrote that book about the Malawian recipes. Yes. Uh, as a thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> it is. Started it, there. Yeah, no, his name is Justin Kamanga. And I, uh, um, yeah, no, the book is, is really picturesque and very easy nice. to follow. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Robert, this makes me think, do you want to say anything about any of the, there were several spin-off effects in Zimbabwe uh, from the project uh, to, to do with the cookbook as well. Maybe is this something that you would like to uh, tell us? That's a spin-off mm -hmm. effect. Yeah, and uh, under the ad for say 2019, the one that we have been working in 2019, one of the objectives was to promote improved household uh, insect consumptions as part of their diet. So we realized, uh, yes, there are some traditional insect consumers, but there were those that were willing to consume insects, but in the form that they were. So uh, again, based on experiences from the first phase that Lindley was uh, working on, Mm. We uh, then uh, deliberately decided to actually innovate in terms of improving processing and adding value to these uh, insects. Uh, this was a spin-off from uh, the, the project, uh, from the Agri for Say 2030 project, because uh, from the marketing, the handling part, the story had to go all the way to the table. Mm -hmm. where these products then need to appear well and test mm -hmm. well to the consumers. So that's a, 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 a direct spin-off from the agri 2030 project. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to just uh, quickly come back to, uh, to focus a little bit on, on the topic of gender and women, uh, mm -hmm. Lilian, and I'm turning to you uh, with uh, uh, with this cookbook made in DRC, which was entirely made by, by AFAC, uh, the, this women organization. How do you see the role of women chefs and women in food systems in Africa, especially working with these kind of alternative uh, food protein sources? Mm -hmm. uh, why was it so important to include these women chefs uh, in the process of creating this cookbook? So I think just um, something which struck me when you asked me the question, you said women chefs. These women were actually not, they're not chefs in, in the sense of yeah. the definition. But when you say women chefs, they are, they are chefs. In fact, they're really experienced. 
And I think yeah. when we started, when I, when I introduced the idea to them, the idea wasn't to work with insects. I think they had grander ideas of what to do. But then when I said, you know, the insects, and then said, oh yeah, we have Mikokolo and we have Mingolo and we have, and suddenly, you know, their vocabulary just grew. Mm. And what, what was most striking, and Robert can attest to this, is when we started off to work with them in the DRC, they thought very local, oh, this is for Congo. And then we said, actually, no, you're also going to, we're going to have an exchange visit to Zimbabwe because we wanted to cross fertilize, you know, agri is about, you know, learning by doing, but it's also about, you know, cross fertilization of knowledge, information, Absolutely. And experience. And then we said, no, you're actually going to also go to Zimbabwe. And that brought in a certain sense of excitement. And Robert was there to receive them. I, I can't remember now, did you go to DRC first or did they come first? We did first. Okay, so Robert traveled to DRC and met them. So he they could also see the environment where these insects, as I said, I needed Robert's expertise, you know, as an entomologist. And then they traveled to the to uh, to Zimbabwe, That's and right. they were just wowed. But those visits, I think, did not really speak to this, you know, women, food, food and knowledge, you know, food cuisine, preparation, processing, mm -hmm. and expertise. Mm -hmm. What really did it for them was mm -hmm. now when we said, okay, so we have the cookbook, Zimbabwe is also going to produce a cookbook, but we have this conference in Zimbabwe, and we want you, Afak, to come and serve a repertoire of insect dishes at this conference. And there are three, I think there are three recipes in the cookbook that are directly taken from the conference. Nice. And uh, when they did their cooking, these women led by Marianne and Karin and uh, um, I can't remember the other lady, there were three or four of them. I, people were in awe of these dishes. You know, this knowledge, this expertise that women have in cookery, in preparation, in understanding the combination of different you know, ingredients to achieve a certain taste that mm. speaks to the mm. mouth or to the palate of certain individuals, whether it's male or female or young, old, people who've never tasted something before and this is just a novel food that they're tasting for the first time. I think at this conference, um, I think these women were just, I think they felt like they had grown, if not two yeah. inches, you know, five inches taller. <laughs> they got this international <laughs> exposure, which yeah. women often do not get. Exactly. You I know, was thinking they, about that. Mm. And then they were even interviewed, I think it was by BBC, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the whole world from looking at a mm. cookery book, you know, a, a mm. recipe book, to now making your own recipes, having your own cookbook, Excellent. and then cooking for a whole international conference. How many people were there, Robert? Between 250 to 300. That's uh, right, 250. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from I don't know how many countries. And they made this, yeah. you know, this wonderful, yeah, buffet for everybody. Yes, yes. So no, I've heard about that one. Gender, uh, gender empowerment, yeah, in terms of, you know, gender equality, empowerment, and mm. this affirmation. These women were affirmed. Their knowledge, their expertise mm. was affirmed. Thank you, Lindley. It was so nice to hear about this. And um, I will, um, uh, I have a couple of more questions before we start to uh, wrap up. Um, mm, a little bit about this uh, hype around insects on a global uh, uh, level. If we look at food systems uh, on a global scale, it's 
rather recently started to gain this attention as an alternative uh, protein source. Uh, how do you see uh, the potential of these cookbooks actually and the recipes? What is the potential outside the African continent? What do you think? Could we, uh, could we start selling the book or giving away the book here in Sweden, for example? Uh, perhaps we can start with uh, Robert this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me say, start by saying, before we go outside uh, Africa, oh, uh, of course. we are still here. Uh, the recipes that we have, which I think are very fantastic, mm. uh, are still very relevant here uh, mm. for, our, for the local population. But most importantly, we have, uh, Africa also depends a lot on tourism. Uh, we have a lot of tourists from across the globe, from across the globe, America, Europe, and so forth. So we are saying these recipes can start from here. Mm -hmm. And when a tourists come visit, they are also already uh, offered uh, these uh, recipes at home. Mm -hmm. Then we hope as they go back to their countries, they will go with these recipes. Uh, and already I'm happy to say that there is uh, a drive towards export of uh, edible insects from Africa to different destinations of the world. For example, from the DRC, Congo, there's a significant amount of exports of different uh, worms that are being exported to Belgium. That's an example. The Mopane wow. worm, a delicacy of Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. It is even being traded on Amazon. Uh, in Canada, they are even uh, United Kingdom. Uh, these insects are finding uh, uh, themselves to these destinations. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can be followed by these uh, recipe books. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite excited. Uh, this is the direction. And we hope uh, these can be then served as delicate dishes abroad. I can't wait. I really look forward to that. Um, Lily, do you have any quick comments on that? Yeah, uh, I fully agree with um, Robert that, you know, even in the African continent uh, and context, we do need these cookbooks. And the beauty of these two cookbooks is that one is written in English and one is written in French. That's right. So they do serve, you know, even the, uh, in terms of um, the lingua franca of the Anglophone and the Francophone countries, I can see that the book while written, you know, in Zimbabwe can serve a very wide uh, geographical location in, um, in Africa. And then the French one, while written from, you know, uh, DRC, can serve all the way to the other Francophone countries in West Africa and mm. in North Africa. And mm. usually this is not what happens. It's either just written in one language, but not in the other. So they're two very unique uh, approaches. And then the fact that they're two different languages means that they can be you know, really used in a, in a wide geographical context mm. within mm. the African uh, continent, but even outside of the continent. Mm. And then I just want to say that, you know, there are people now who are saying, why do we only have to wait for these insects when they're in season mm. in Africa? They, they, they actually ask, they say, you scientists, can you not do anything about it? And they're right. So I think Robert has a lot of work cut out for him together with so many others, because people would like to see the farming or the rearing of these mm. insects so that they are more readily available and perhaps this could be one way of addressing the sustainability issue but also mm. the stewardship because people have noticed that there is a shortage of these insects in terms of availability and that's why the price is so high and and in urban areas i don't think it's that people don't want to eat it but the minute they move from the rural areas and they come to the urban areas there's studies that show that you know the prices are five, sometimes even ten times higher. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, it's not just the protein aspect of it. No. There's the cultural preference, and then there is you know the the knowledge and the sustainability issues as well. Yeah, this uh, actually now you were answering my 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 last question. I was wondering exactly this. What about the? How do you see the development? Uh, of edible insects as a protein, but 
working in different types of social cultural context? How would it work in rural areas versus urban areas? What is the potential there in, in Africa? Robert, do you have any more additional comments to that? Just to add a little bit on what Lindy has already said, mm. I just want to say I can envisage a situation where this is uh, going to expand, mm. but this should be this is going to be on the backdrop of more product uh, innovation. I hope we are going to make more cookbooks uh, going mm. into the future. And uh, the supply side, as Lindy has already said, needs to be addressed through uh, stewardship, conservation, uh, insect farming. Marketing also needs to be strengthened mm -hmm. so that uh, people are made more aware of these products on the market. Mm -hmm. And issues to do with food safety and tracking. I think consumers are quite uh, concerned and they will be interested in uh, uh, getting mm -hmm. these things uh, to be sorted out before uh, they can be wide, uh, widespread consumption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And just to add on, I think what um, Robert, uh, in, the, in the few years that we have been collaborating, there is no shortage of interest from the public. In fact, what we are seeing is that we are in short supply to, to support or to facilitate um, individuals that are interested in these um, in, 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 in issues around uh, both insect uh, production, but also in terms of uh, processing and, um, and marketing and adding value. So the knowledge which um, Robert and colleagues at Chinoy University have put into this you know, textbook in a very systematic, you know, methodical uh, way, I think we need more of those. And in order to, 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 to address uh, and target a much wider audience that is interested in eating these, um, these products. Mm. Because the way that they have been you know, put into cookies, uh, Robert, and uh, into samosas, and exactly. you know, let's not forget hamburger type, mm. you know. Yeah. There is so much uh, scope developing this within the African context yeah. and I think we've just you know been scratching the tip of the iceberg so exactly. I'm very excited about that but also the breeding aspects Robert mm -hmm. you might want to add something there oh yeah the, the breeding aspect is there anything you want to say Robert yes uh, there's there's a lot of research going on mm. on different sex species uh, but I must say the most tasty insects and the widely consumed one, there are still a lot of uh, challenges and breakthroughs that are needed. Mm -hmm. I can cite the Mopane worm, for example. This is a, an area that we need to continue working on so that we can uh, make sure that we can breed this in large quantities that can sustain the market. Mm -hmm. So there is more work to be done. Uh, that is, uh, is good. But I, I think we had, there were lots of positive notes here uh, on the potential of uh, edible in insects as uh, food. Uh, also in terms of combating uh, food insecurity and hunger uh, and reaching SDG2. I think this is uh, really important what you have been working on and what you're still working on. And these two uh, cookbooks is a very, very valuable addition uh, in the process. Uh, I, um, be before we conclude, uh, I would just like to ask one fun uh, question. Please tell me which one is your favorite recipe from these uh, books, one of them. Um, Lindy, please start. Wow. Um, Maybe there are many. <laughs> there are many, but um, I just keep remembering, and I know that Robert knows this, when we were in Zimbabwe at the conference, and they had, it was like a, a pilau rice or jollof rice with termites in it, mm. together with mushrooms. Termites are my favorite insect. And of course, also yeah. the, the green elegant grasshopper. But they, they had made this wonderful, it's in the cookbook, 
it is this big, lovely, you know, uh, rice pilau or jollof mm -hmm. rice with termites and um, and and mushrooms in it. it it's my favorite. And then nice. uh, there's so many. Then there was, of course, the the green leafy vegetables also with, uh, and then yeah, there, there are many. <laughs> there's so many. We have to go and, would, the, and Robert. Yeah, I would like to, to say try as many as possible. Yeah, yeah. Good tip. And uh, Robert, which one is your favorite? Thank you. Definitely the edible sting bag nuggets. Ah. These are quite wonderful. The process involves kind of extracting the oil or fat from the insects and then blending with um, uh, flour. So the filling in the mouth is so rich, I can't describe it. <laughs> it's so fantastic. And Excellent. Please try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, I can't remember which one there was, but when I, I was in Zimbabwe and I tasted, I got to taste many different ones. I really liked the cookies. They were so delicious. There were several cookies there. I can't remember which uh, insect they contain, but uh, I remember they were really yummy. Uh, okay, thank, you. thank you so much, both of you for taking your time. Um, I, I can't wait to uh, post this video and share it with the world as well as the, these two beautiful cookbooks. Thank you very much. I think we will conclude here. Thank you. Thank you. And watch this space. Robert and I are not going away. This is just a journey. Yeah. And, uh, watch this space. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Can't wait.